Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Hero Ed TV. I would like to welcome 56 schools represented this afternoon. And my name is Bryce. I am with great friends coming from different time zones. And we are just so fortunate because this afternoon for the second episode of Hero Ed TV presenting Lecturio Nursing App, we are joined again by no other than the CEO of Lecturio Germany, Estefan Wiesbauer. Estefan, please. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bryce. It's always an honor to join you. I'm always impressed just how professionally you organize all of these and, and run the roles and so on. So thank you very much for having me. Um, it's a real honor um, for uh, greeting you from Leipzig here in Germany and um, uh, you making an exciting start uh, to my day. You know, part of on my schedule today uh, is a call with a global fund around health extension workers. Um, uh, so for those of you who have not um, heard of Lecturio yet, uh, what are we about? You're going to hear more, obviously, as part of this session. But um, <clears throat> part of our mission is to drive evidence-based medical education. And by medical, I mean really health worker education. Um, by evidence-based, in that case, we don't mean the medical evidence. We take that as a given that that is what everyone would be teaching these days. But really bringing the learning science into the teaching and making that easier for all of you and making it easier by making sure that you have all of the different content formats that can help you as faculty and help your learners and have them in one consistent um, kind of um, system, have them all interconnected. So it's easy for you to assign and track and get the benefits of all of those things, but also have it be flexible, you know, because it's important that you can tailor these customize these, add your own things, and so on. So it should be a tool that you have gives you full freedom, but makes your life a lot easier. That is part of the goal. And But frankly, to make learning science happen, uh, it's not possible to do it with a library. You know, you need a smart system. So we build a lot of artificial intelligence into the platform, uh, includes advanced space retrieval algorithms, for example. And um, there is uh, both refinements to that coming, giving the learner more control over it and things like that. And um, two more things which are which are coming shortly. We won't be able to show you today, but I'll give you a little sneak preview. Um, one is time management. And um, at least the nurses that we work with um, say that, you know, for, for students in general, and the, the, this is again on all the health workers, our medical people agree, um, time management is a big issue, you know. So um, what will be possible within the platform very shortly is actually a visualization and guidance for the learner um, to see what their learning would look like if they go deadline by deadline, you know, which tends to often the, be the mode that, that learners fall into, but then really uh, do an artificial intelligence uh, smoothing of that. You know, So what should I be doing today to not have this crunch in two weeks time when all of a sudden I have to double my daily workload to meet my deadlines? And um, also from a faculty perspective, this might be entirely different at your school, but I am told there are schools where, you know, people assign things to their learners and uh, they're not always checking with all of the other subjects how much it adds up to, you know, but uh, certainly even if you are checking, it's not an easy task to keep tap of all of these things. So uh, what we're doing with this time management feature is actually giving you then the faculty view for what this looks like in aggregate for your students, you know, which are the, the you know, students with the highest or lowest workload, what is the average and so on, so that you can coordinate more easily amongst each other to optimize the workload for the students. And, and final thing in, in terms of the intelligence is uh, we're enabling a more focused review um, within the platform. What I mean by that is um, you as learners and you as faculty can al already see for each of the individual um, learners and your groups, what are the subject areas where they're struggling and so on. You can sort and drill down, um, but now we'll make it even easier. So say you did a number of cases um, as questions, uh, you will then be able to just review the ones that you had wrong with one kind of playlist that automatically gets generated for you. And um, so that's just a little outlook, um, but frankly, we want your creativity and, and hear your needs and your problems as we work with all of you. And uh, let me especially welcome uh, some of the partners that, uh, that we're working with already in the Philippines, you know, whether it's uh, Our Lady of Fatima University, SPUP, UERM, University of Perpetual Health, Davao, you're all at different stages of implementation potentially. 
and, uh, and, and please forgive me in case I forgot somebody, my colleague Timo was on the call and, and Dr. Bryce and Nikhil are doing such a great job that it's hard for me to keep track, but uh, we welcome all of you and hope you will find this a productive and helpful and inspiring session. And thanks again for having me, Dr. Bryce. Thank you so much. It's always an honor to have you in the room for um, webinars like this, Stefan. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, um, you have heard our dear president all the way from Germany. As I welcome everyone, I know that you're asking yourself, like, why are we in this room again? Uh, what's there to learn? What's there to know? And what's there to, you know, bring home? And that's will come up right, right after, before I introduce, of course, our resource person this afternoon, who happens to be as an equally handsome guy named Mr. Timo Weiser, okay? But for now, would like you to know what is Hero at DV platform about? So let me share this with you. Thank you. Changes will ultimately transform our entire organization. Our organization, to organization to media, 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 never media, 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 media,
um, especially um, when you have students who are not in the room with you, uh, that can, can make it very challenging to teach clinical skills, critical thinking skills and so on. And uh, we really wanna help you uh, make your lives easier as Stefan also mentioned, and also support you with evidence-based education so that you know at all times how your students are doing and what they need further support with. I lost my mouse, there we go, all right. Um, all right, so um, a lot of the content is already on the platform. As mentioned in the last webinar, um, some of our content is still in development and uh, the rest of the um, content is projected to be live in August, so ready um, in time for the new semester in the Philippines. And we're excited to, to support you in this new um, era of um, education, really. Um, most schools worldwide that we've spoken with um, really want to move towards blended education after the pandemic is over. Um, and um, exciting times to come, a lot of change that's also coming with that, of course. And um, I understand if, if, if that is challenging to many, um, and, uh, but we're here to support you along the way and can really help you digitize your school um, with a few snaps of our fingers, so to say. So it's a really quick process in the end. Um, so in terms of um, curriculum enhancement for um, nursing schools from the Philippines, um, just want to mention a few, a few things here, a few updates. So we have released a lot of new content. Um, so a lot of content um, for obstetrics um, and um, also content on hand hygiene. We have a lot of new physical exam videos, um, content on IV therapy, um, there's now 1,800 QBank questions, um, and there's a the first uh, learning path is available for nursing as well. The MedSearch learning path, the most important one in the end for students. And um, can, I can show you in a minute what this looks like. Um, so the learning paths overall are a new feature, which you can now also utilize for your own content and uh, mix with ours. Uh, so this is quite exciting, exciting stuff uh, that can really help um, us both jointly further customize your experience and also um, your students' experience as well, of course. Um, the end of the video summary notes, um, also super exciting stuff. Um, you know, we're all about learning science. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard about that, we are all about learning science and um, having end of, um, videos, um, end of video summary notes uh, pop up where students summarize um, what they've learned in their own words is really, really beneficial for the long-term mastery of these concepts. And this is what we're all about. We want to help you produce better nurses who can serve the communities better and remember uh, and master these concepts for the long term so that they also come to mind when they're then actually working with patients. Um, the, um, yeah, as Stefan mentioned, we do have the first nursing clients um, on board in the Philippines, which has allowed us to Start the mapping process and customization process um, for the chat curriculum. And we are um, mapping the chat curriculum, but also some of the literature for you as well to make sure that it's a fully customized experience um, for you. Um, and then, of course, also always work with the individual schools. Um, I'm not sure. There's a saying for medical schools. I haven't heard it for nursing schools yet, but it will be the same. And the saying goes, um, if you've seen one medical school, you've seen one medical school because it's, they, they are all so different. And from my experience, it's also true for nursing schools. Even if you share a curriculum, uh, your goals, aspirations and so on are very much different, of course. And um, so we support also on a very individual basis. So we can support with additional content creation. Um, for example, um, Prof. Ronda, who, who you've seen and saw in the um, video that Bryce shared at the beginning, um, she's currently working on a um, small course on nursing, a research in nursing or nursing research, I think it's called. Um, so um, this, this can happen as well. So um, we want to make sure that you have the best possible experience and customized experience for your school um, at all times. Um, all right, so let's jump in. So that, that these were the updates. I'm going to show the new content during this mini demo here. So we can combine and make the best use of time for both of um the ones who've already seen the platform and the ones who haven't seen it yet. And I'm going to be very, very swift, so no worries. And then we're going to jump right into a Q&A session. All right, so um, who's Lecturia? So Lecturia was founded 12 years ago and has many investors. Um, one of the main investors is Holtzbring Publishing Group or Holtzbring Digital. And they own many publishers. Um, and two examples here are Spring and Nature and Macmillan. Uh, you're probably familiar with those two. And we're right in the middle there. So we do have this publishing background. Um, and know how to produce high quality um, medical content. 
we did create um, the platform and the content together with um, professors from top schools such as Harvard, Yale, Johns Hopkins and so on. But the most important thing for us was really to find um, educators who put their heart into teaching, who use metaphors and so on. Um, and uh, so that all of them come from these top branded schools, um, but we really cherry picked the ones um, that, that are just the best teachers um, worldwide and um, use them or work with them uh, to produce the content that you can now see on the platform. Uh, we also measured, of course, um, the impact of lecturers. So we've been around for a while now, so we had some time to do that. Um, and um, we did that on a student level and also on an institution level. Um, and uh, we've had over 1 million users on our lecturer platform so far, individual users, plus the, the school users um, aren't taken into account here. And uh, you can see that um, students are very, very happy with Lecturio. 92% um, of them said that Lecturio actually improved their exam scores. Um, having Lecturio access helped 90% um, to reduce their exam stress levels. Important these days, we're actually running a webinar on uh, well being um, uh, very shortly, I think in two weeks or so, um, which um, you can sign up via the Lecturio um, website, um, which I can share in the chat later on. 98% um, uh, 98 percent um, of um, the students said that they would recommend lecture to a friend and um, this is also very important for us because we always want to improve our offering of course um, and our product and uh, if there's any feedback you can share with us how we can further improve that's very much welcome um, and then we can optimize and so on. 37% uh, of students, uh, I'm sorry, um, we also measure student performance and 37% um, ans answered questions um, more correct uh, after 12 hours um, of uh, lecture content. So this seems to be like the magic threshold there. Um, so um, 12 hours is a lot of content if you think about it that a lecture content does, it's not just the video, but it's like the uh, quiz questions that pop up afterwards Then you have the video summary notes. Um, so um, going through 12 hours of content can be quite demanding, um, but um, of course students have, it's, it's, it's a demanding subject, of course, so it makes sense to spend some time there. Uh, we also measured the efficacy with um, a institution. So this is um, one of our Caribbean partners here and uh, a Caribbean medical school also, just so, to be clear. And uh, many of the Caribbean medical schools take in the students who, uh, the US students who don't get into um, US medical schools and then prepare them for the US national um, state exam called USMLE um, step one and step two. And we measured a 28% pass rate increase, 47% for step one, 47% pass rate increase for step two, um, and a 47% score increase um, for the NBME subject exams um, after the implementation of lecture. Of course, there's always correlations and uh, things going on that, that are hard to measure. Um, but not much has changed um, or did change at that school um, in, during that time frame, except for the implementation of Victoria. So we're pretty confident that uh, most of that um, improvement um, came from the lecture implementation. All right, so we did um, use <laughs> so slides that look very similar, um, but um, overall, like what's there for, lect um, for lecture nursing partners is um, a comprehensive video library. So you have um, access to over 2000 videos um, the average length, length of the videos is seven minutes, roughly. I've mentioned the learning science um, aspect of Lecturio and learning science says clearly that the average attention span of students uh, is 10 minutes or lower. Some even say eight minutes, some seven and so on. So we try to keep the videos as short as possible to make sure uh, that we accommodate the um, attention span of um, your students. Um, all right, so um, this is there uh, for the students to access. So you can imagine it as kind of like a mini university that they have in their pocket at all time or mini nursing school, um, which again is highly customized to your school. So you would have your logo and everything, your color and everything, um, and can also add your own content um, and your own spice, so to say. So it's really like, a, Stefan mentioned a few of our partners, like a mini Our Lady of Fatima University in their pockets that they have access to at all times also with offline learning. Um, so um, the mobile apps that you would get as well, um, make sure that students have access to lecture at all times from any device um, and they can also study offline. So they can download all, all of the content onto their devices and um, we can ensure low bandwidth usage because they can also adjust the playback quality of the videos um, for the, the actual like playback. 
um, but also when they download the videos, um, you can be sure that they uh, don't use too much bandwidth. Uh, there's also cool features such as the book manager, which I'm going to show in a second. Um, after each of the videos, recall questions pop up, um, and these make sure that the students have understood the concepts properly that they've just watched. Uh, so give them direct feedback. Um, but this data is also being stored for you as an educator. If, if you're teaching yourself, if you're a dean or president or CEO, uh, then it can help your faculty teach more evidence-based um, so they will always know what's going on and have full control over the student's learning experience. Um, there's 4,000 of these questions, plus we have a queue bank with 1,800 um, questions, um, additional questions that you can use for exams, that you can assign to students, that you can also give students access to directly so they can um, brush up their um, knowledge there and make sure that they've understood everything properly. We're also all about personalized learning, self-directed learning, um, and to empower students to take initiative and prepare for sessions with you. Um, so I'm, I'm going to show a few examples later on. Stefan mentioned the new time management feature that's coming um, shortly, uh, which also goes into that direction. So for faculty and deans, so how can we help um, faculty and deans um, at nursing schools? Um, so on the one hand, you have access to the same content here. So the 2000 videos um, are roughly 160 hours of content. And um, you can use all of our content for teaching, for any kind of blended teaching, for online teaching. Um, there's different use cases, or so you can utilize lecture in different ways, however, or whatever you feel comfortable with. So some schools just give lecture to their students as kind of like a library resource on steroids is what we were called recently. Um, but um, you can also integrate it into the teaching process. Um, you can use it for, for blended teaching, flipped classroom teaching and so on. Um, I've, I've um, um, spoke with a school from Vietnam recently and um, their schools are moving towards the Harvard Medical School education format. So it's a lot of small group sessions, a lot of um, self-directed learning. Um, and um, that seems to be like a global trend uh, that's going on. Um, at medical schools, um, at least. Um, and um, this is also a great platform and, and content to work with. Um, if you want to utilize our content for teaching in other ways, if you have a license for all of your students, you're very welcome to also utilize our slide decks. So you can, um, instead of assigning a video to your students, you can just utilize the slide decks, download all of our slide decks. And there's in total over 9,000, uh, around 2,000 for nursing um, education at the moment. And you can then create your own voice over PowerPoint presentation or deliver a synchronous session um, to your students um, with the existing slide decks. You can also take um, just the illustrations. So it uh, makes it very easy to find illustrations on our platform because the videos are very short, remember? So you can just search for um, the electrical um, uh, circuit of the heart, um, something like that. And then the short video will show up and you can download the slide deck and then use the illustrations that we have created um, and use them on your own slide decks. As long as your students have a license to lecture, it's totally fine. Uh, we want to make your lives easier, as mentioned, and, um, and help you in whichever way you prefer. So um, you are in charge, of course. We are your assistant. So we, we are really your teaching assistant in the end. Um, and uh, also assist, of course, with performance data. Stefan mentioned that we're all about evidence-based education. So we provide you with a lot of information about your students. Um, if you think about it, like at the moment, many schools or and faculty are somewhat disconnected from their students um, physically, of course, um, but also a bit like emotionally. It's, it's difficult to, to judge how students are doing uh, emotionally, but also um, in terms of um, learning the content and so on um, when, when you're under lockdown and so on. So um, having this data available, I'm going to show you an example in a minute, makes a lot of sense and can make your lives easier in the sense that you know what to focus on in your next session. You can just look it up very quick, um, how your students um, have been doing with content X and Y. And then maybe you see that they've already understood everything and you can move on to the next topic. Um, you can also run remote exams with proctoring, without proctoring. Um, there's also a nice proctoring integration. This is AI proctoring um, by Proctorio, um, similar sounding company name, but it's a different company. We just built an integration for them. Um, so you can really have AI webcam proctoring um, for your exams here. Um, but we also have a, um, an included um, um, solution with a safe exam browser. 
um, which I can show you in a minute as well. Um, you can also upload your own questions. Um, doesn't matter if it's um, ex exam questions, so these QBank questions or these pop-up call questions. And the most important thing, um, you can feed this data to your existing learning management system, and you can also connect Lecturio to your existing learning management system. If you have Moodle, Blackboard, Canvas, any of the likes, um, we can connect to it and make sure that um, if you're a faculty member, that you don't have to um, change the way you've taught so far over the year, um, but you can stick with your established routines and just benefit from Lecturio's content and the performance data. So we don't want to make your lives more com uh, complicated, but easier as mentioned. Um, so uh, we do build these kinds of solutions to make sure that, um, that you can um, utilize everything in the best possible way. Uh, the last thing I want to mention here before I jump quickly into the um, platform and show you some content is that we customize um, Lecturio 2 on the one hand nursing schools from the Philippines. So we are aware of the chat curriculum and we're mapping the content to it. Um, but at the same time, we're also customizing it um, for the individual stu the school, as mentioned earlier. So um, Prof. Ronda actually went through all of the slides here, and I'm just going to uh, or uh, all of the um, curriculum and um, created the slide deck here. So um, mapped, basically, um, what we have to do and so on and showcase how we can support your schools. Um, and you can see it's a lot of slides here and a lot of effort that went into this. And you can see these slides are all about how we can support the Filipino um, chat curriculum. And uh, yeah, so um, there's many, many ways how we can support, like even for care of the older person and so on. Um, all right, so just wanted to mention that you will have a very customized experience. Jumping into the platform here, very quick overview, so I don't want to uh, take away too much time here. Um, this is what your account could look like. Of course, you would have instead of the, the Filipino flag here, which is super beautiful, I must say, with, with the sun here and the stars, um, you, can, you would have your own school's logo here. Um, you would have your own colors, you can have your own URL, and as mentioned, it can connect to your existing system. Um, so uh, most schools use Canvas, some have Moodle, some have something else. We can connect to it and uh, make sure that everything runs smoothly. Um, each faculty member and each student gets their own access here. As mentioned, we're all about individualized learning and self-directed learning. Um, so this is very important, of course. Um, all right, there's just two sides to the whole thing. Very easy to use. You have the administration here, which you can think of as the faculty playground. Um, it's also great for deans and presidents and CEOs because you can see um, your students' performance here at a glance, can make sure everything is okay. Just like a 10 second glance at the platform here is enough to make sure everything's running smoothly, basically. Um, and um, but you can also go very deep into the um, performance data, understand who is struggling with what. So you can identify struggling students very easily. So you can find people such as myself here, Timo, 52% correctly answer questions. That's not good. Like should be like higher, like at least 60 or 70. Um, so I'm struggling for sure. But then you also have people such as Stefan. Um, who has 27% correctly answered questions. He improved from last time, though, it was 22% or so. Um, so well done on the improvement. Um, but overall, still, of course, clearly struggling. Um, so you can then um, go into the library statistics here, for, for example, and search for his name, and then uh, go into whatever you're interested in. So for example, if you're interested in his clinical skills, skills, <laughs> and you can see uh, that, for example, for the extension tubing and protection of IV site um, video, he's answered two of the questions incorrectly here. So these are the pop-up questions. I'm going to show you the, the content in a second. Um, he's answered two questions correctly. And then the third one he didn't even answer. So probably he just threw his computer against the wall or something. Um, and uh, that would also explain why he got a new one recently. Um, but anyhow, so you can see how your students are doing on a very, very granular level. So you can, for example, before you go and teach a session on this topic here, you can just search for your class here and then see the performance for this particular content. And as long as your students have access to lecture, they will go in, they will work with the platform, they will watch videos, they will answer questions and so on. Um, we actually have had 
uh, some several usage records from the Philippines recently. So, you know, we, we work worldwide. Uh, we have partners in the US, in Europe, everywhere on the planet, in Africa, everywhere really. And um, the Filipino students really dig the platform. So they, um, the, um, what is it called, a UERM, I really broke a usage record there, um, the, the medical school though, um, where they watched over, they answered over 2 million questions within three months or so, so that we've never seen that before. So they will watch content, they will answer questions, and by doing so, they will produce this performance data for you. Um, so you can just jump in and take a look there, but you can also, of course, assign content first and uh, then check their performance to make sure that they are actually watching the videos and so on. Um, so in essence, you can let us teach the basics um, first and then spend your time, uh, your valuable time on um, the stuff that's really interesting. So solving problems that students, students have um, or applying the knowledge that they've learned um, to an actual case. So um, that's the core idea. Um, but if you don't want us to do that, you can, of course, also teach yourself and then just take a look at the performance data here. Um, you can do many other things. See, I'm going to be very brief as much. You can assign content to students, uh, which looks like the following, and then you can see the status, how they've done, and so on. Um, and here you can also ve go very, very granular, so you can understand um, what they've understood and so on, what they haven't understood, uh, what confidence level they've chosen when they answered the questions and so on. You can upload your own content here, add your own recall questions. Um, you can um, have these kinds of um, customized content bundles. Um, so here is an example from one of our US partner schools. Um, that's a medical school as well. This is an example we're allowed to show. So this is why I'm showing you this one. Um, and we map that complete curriculum. This is what I mentioned earlier when I said we, we are in the process of mapping the chat curriculum. Uh, this is what it could look like then in the end. So this is the Fundamentals of Medicine one course mapped on a weekly basis. And this is uh, all their learning objectives, their structure and our content lives within that structure. And now just imagine how convenient this would be for you as a faculty member or for your faculty members. Um, you can simply assign this at the end of week three or at the beginning of week four. Um, your students will then go in and watch content like flow pressure and resistance theory, blood flow and velocity and so on, and answer the pop-up questions afterwards. And then you can, once they're done, you can um, just go in here go to the assignments, and then I'm going to quickly show you an example that makes sense here. And then you can, this one's good, check the progress and performance. So you can see, have they watched the videos? Have they answered the questions? Have they answered the questions correctly or incorrectly? So clearly here, Stefan is struggling again with the content. Um, it happens when you study math and, <laughs> and public health. Um, and um, down here, um, you can even see the aggregated performance. Here it's just the one student, but if you have a group of students, it would be the aggregated performance here and can then understand which questions they get wrong um, predominantly, which questions they get right and so on. And you can even click on the questions and then see uh, which answer option they have chosen. You can see the confidence level. This is what I mean when I say you have full control over your students' learning experience. Uh, you do have the full control. So if you've read the novel 1984 by George Orwell, for example, this is it come to life for nursing education. So you know everything um, about your students. Um, and also sort by, by many, many things and so on. Um, alrighty, so this is what that part looks like. Um, and uh, you can create your own custom bundles. You can create your own learning paths. I'm, I've mentioned I'm, going, I'm, I'm about to show you um, a learning path in a second. Um, you can also run exams on a platform with AI proctoring turned on. Um, so it's really easy to run remote exams um, via the platform. It doesn't get any easier. Um, if you want to see that, um, for example, you're always welcome um, to schedule a demo with us. Um, but as mentioned, I'm going to um, keep it brief here. So this is like the, the overview for the faculty side. And I want to show you the um, student side here now and the content. Yeah. Let me just jump in with one brief comment here. Uh, yes, of course. Maybe since you just completed the faculty <clears throat> control room, and since you mentioned George Orwell and so on, we don't want to scare <laughs> you. But uh, <laughs> one, thing, one thing one thing worth mentioning is that if you think about the regulators 
and the, the, the best practice that is being put forward by the regulators um, that, are, that are checking um, your setups and so on and ensuring your continued accreditation. A lot of the things that Timo is showing you, um, you know, kind of data-driven uh, monitoring of students, early identification of students that are struggling, you know, the ability to allocate and assign, you know, structured um, remediation support as well. You know, these are all things that the reg regulators look for and, and mandate as part of the best practice, you know. So therefore, you're helping yourself, uh, not just in the practical teaching, also from a compliance standpoint, but really helping you um, uh, meet the best practices that are evolving, obviously, and also going more and more in that direction of expecting meaningful online support, expecting early identification of students, etc. And I think Timo kind of touched on that. This the, He mentioned this practical fragmentation, you being separated in the emotional part, but even if you're back together... Uh, and, and say there's no more lockdown or anything else, practical reality um, uh, for, for the students is that they spend a lot of time learning by themselves. Uh, and if you look at the traditional library resources available to them, then that is something that most students don't find too attractive. You know, the things you can look up on access medicine, up to date, you know, kind of eBooks, articles and things like that. So then they go hunt for videos, you know, which they find on YouTube or they subscribe to. And, you know, if you're lucky, they find a good source like Lecturio and they subscribe to Lecturio. But here's the problem. It's still kind of time disconnected from your teaching, you know. So therefore, there's this big opportunity to sort of take all that time that your students are going to be spending in self-directed learning, where they usually go hunt for things and you don't know what they find, to make sure that they have adequate things where you can steer them, where you can monitor them, whether you've assigned these things or not, and then make those data valuable, both for the student with space retrieval and things like that, which Timo is about to show you, but also for yourselves, you know. And and that is, you know, rather than Orwellian, you know, it's really sort of the whole idea where I think education systems and the regulators uh, are wanting things to go um, uh, because obviously in the end, it's beneficial for everybody involved. You know, if, if problems show up early, if teaching can be personalized, if a valuable face-to-face -face time can be focused on the areas where students struggle and where all that self-directed learning time no longer happens in isolation and also generates value by that. So I just wanted to add that briefly to this sort of cockpit uh, part of the presentation and let Timo continue with the learner side here. Thank you, Stefan, very valuable uh, addition. And um, all right, let's jump in. Um, so this is what your students would see when they log into your platform. Um, and um, let's jump uh, to the content here real quick. Oopsies, there we go. Um, so this is the nursing content that's um, on the platform here. So you have um, content on learning how to learn, basically, uh, very important for students. Like, I, I wish I had had this kind of content when I started university. Um, I did not. <laughs> um, so this is very valuable information. So you have content on, on how your brain processes information, how to change bad habits, um, um, how memory mastery works, so pause and recall, and so on and so on. Uh, so this is very valuable information. And I, if I were a faculty member, I would definitely assign this to my students at the beginning of the semester, or better at the beginning when they start their um, educational process at your school. Um, there's also content um, on fundamentals of nursing, of course, the theory, but also the clinical skills. I'm going to show you examples in a minute. Maternal newborn nursing, very important. Um, I have a kid on the way, so I'm, I'm also watching some of the content here uh, to prepare for that. I'm not sure if you can properly prepare in the end, but um, I'm giving my best. Um, Med search, of course, covered with almost 50 hours of content alone. Um, you have pediatric nursing, pharmacology, dosage calculation. There's also NCLEX pharma prep on here. So if you have students who want to go to the US um, later on, um, the prep um, part is also covered here. But we can also create the same kind of prep materials um, or exam prep paths. I'm going to show you that in a minute, as I mentioned twice already. Um, for your national exam in the Philippines. So um, feel free to, to let us know if that's of interest to you and then we can jointly work on making that happen. Um, there's leadership content on here, mental health, physiology, content and nursing prerequisites um, are also covered here. Um, so microbiology, psychology and sociology, chemistry, molecular and cell biology, all very important, of course. Um, all right, so let's take a look at some content. I've spoken a lot about videos and haven't even shown you one yet. So let's let's do that real quick. Um, there's, um, on the one hand, um, most of the videos are very theory based, um, but some of them are also very uh, practical. So we have these clinical skills videos, 
on the platform, but I want to show you a theory and video first. Um, this is Prof. Ronda mentioned earlier. We have um, multiple professors on here um, and all in extremely good educators. And uh, let me just show you an example here. So as mentioned, um, MedSearch has almost 50 hours of content, 49 um, hours there, um, and has um, 715 short videos with over 1,000 quiz questions. Um, so you can imagine how comprehensive the whole thing is in the end. Um, all right, so here you can see there's like nine hours on neurological and musculoskeletal disorders uh, and so on and so on. Don't want to bore you with the details, um, but um, let's take a quick look at a video here. So I'm just going to jump in here and let's take a look at the review of electrical conduction system of the heart. Um, and let me actually reshare my screen because I'm not sure if I ticked the box for the audio to share as well. I did not, so good that I did that now. And I'm just going to shut up, shut up for a second and uh, let you watch a bit of the video. Hi, I am so excited to share this session with you because this is the reason I almost quit nursing as a student. No, really, they made me take a dysrhythmia course and I cried through the first three or four days of it because it just didn't make sense to me. It looked like it was all over the place. Then, the night before the exam, something clicked. And that's what I wanna share with you. I finally realized I could be a nurse, so can you. It's really straightforward. Once you understand the heart's electrical system, then dysrhythmias are gonna make perfect sense to you. So you ready? I'm gonna share with you what I wish I would have known as a student at the beginning of that course that I took. So let's start with a fun question. I know I've got a weird sense of fun, but do you think your heart can beat without the brain? All right, so this is like an example of what like a, a nice intro looks like. Uh, let me move, the, skip a bit forward. Uh, let me actually try to find the right spot here. Uh, so here's an example of, of a, such a metaphor that we, um, that we like to use. So here we have um, the electrical conduction system of the heart. Um, displayed as kind of, or, or like portrayed as a, as a relay race where you hand off a baton to the next carrier and so on. But I'm gonna um, let uh, Prof. Rondo explain it. She's much better at, at that than I am. So think of the electrical system as the heart as a reroll. So it's got the runners handing off a baton to the next carrier. So you got it? That's why there's a track on the left side and you've got the heart on the right side. Okay. Let's break it down. So we know that we're in a relay race. We're gonna start with the SA node because that's the natural pacemaker of the heart. All right, so this is an example of, of a more theory-based video. Um, and now let's jump into a clinical skills video so that you've also seen that. Um, and uh, just let me show you a quick example here um, on um, IV catheter insertion and removal. Now that we've gathered all of our equipment, now let's look at actually inserting the IV. So number one, make sure you put on gloves. Then we're gonna apply the tourniquet to the arm. We then wanna assess the veins and see which insertion site's gonna be best for us. So the beginning of the video is again, a bit more like an overview and theory based, um, but here um, we're now jumping into the actual thing um, and Samantha is going to explain like where to insert an IV, where not to insert an IV. And uh, we also use a couple of graphical overlays, but you're going to see that. See that now. One thing to remember, you do not want to stick on the inner wrist of a patient. Reason why this is, this is very uncomfortable and there's a lot of nerves. There's some very tempting veins here for sure, but this is a high risk area of really causing some sort of nerve damage for your patient. So try to avoid on the inside aspect of the arm. All right, so we use these graphical overlays as mentioned to make sure that students understand the anatomy behind it as well. Uh, and we visualize good IV insertion points here. So uh, pretty obvious. Dominant hand to stretch so it doesn't wiggle. We need to keep that in mind. And before we puncture the skin, we need to be able to see the bevel up. What that means is when I look down at my catheter, I can see a little bit hole, a little bitty hole, and that's what we want, bevel up. All right, so now that I've cleaned, I can advance. So I need to hold my skin taut 
And now when I puncture, I'm going to go at a very 10 to 15 degree angle. I don't want to go like this because I can puncture through the vein. All right. So now that I've punctured the vein, what I'm looking for is flash. So now you see blood return in the catheter. That's what we want. That's what we want indeed. All right, so that's an, an example for the clinical skills videos. But if you want to take a look, uh, a closer look at all of the content and your specialty, especially, um, then we're very happy to send you test access so that you can just browse through everything. No strings attached. You can just take a look at everything, look around. Um, and uh, yeah, so just let Bryce or Nikki know um, or me directly um, if you prefer that. Um, and um, we can make that happen for you um, even today. Um, all right. So after each of these uh, videos, quiz questions pop up. Very important for the students, as mentioned earlier. So you get um, um, direct feedback. Have I understood the concept or not? Um, you click on stuff uh, on the correct not stuff. Sorry, the correct answer option. Choose the confidence level, as mentioned earlier, and that was not correct. Let me try again. Like I'm just clicking on stuff here. Um, and yeah, here I got one right. And now you can see it's correct and learned for four days. We also, again, mentioning learning science, um, utilize space repetition um, as a tool to make sure that students really master concepts for the long term and learn them for the long term. So after the four days are over, um, this question will pop up for me as a student again. Um, and then I can repeat this the question and answer it again and make sure that I've understood it and can then also remediate um, within this space repetition um, algorithm. Uh, there's a ton of these questions there. Um, and um, yeah, uh, the other thing I want to show you, two more things, and uh, then we're through, um, is the exam prep path. Um, so as mentioned, just have to find it here because in, in my demo card, I also have the medical content here. Um, started it already. Okay, can see it here. But as an example here, for example, um, the microbiology exam prep path looks like the following, and the med search one looks um, directly the same, yeah, exactly the same. Uh, you have QBank questions here, you have videos here, and quiz questions. So you can really create a customized learning path for your student or exam prep path, depending on the context, and um, can put in anything. Uh, can put anything into the the learning path here. So for example, you could put in 100 of our videos, 100 of your own videos. Uh, you can put in like some of your exam questions, some of our exam questions, and then assign this to your students. And your students can just like start with the learning path. So first there's an intro, learning tips and stuff like that. Um, test taking strategies, this can also be included there. And then you can create your own blocks. Some schools call it day one, day two, some call it block one, block two, again, whatever you prefer. And um, then your students can have a better structure and um, a structured approach to studying and, and learning a um, certain subject or whatever you want them to learn. All right. And then you can just start it and they will have this overview here. So a lot of fun with fungi here. <laughs> There's actually a joke um, with fungi, but um, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> Um, we also have a question bank for nursing um, schools, so um, students can just create their own custom tests here. Um, they can choose the difficulty level of the questions, can choose the subject. For example, med surge, 1,248 questions there for them, um, can choose the subject. So for example, they want to focus on the respiratory system, and they can start the test. And you can also assign these tests to your students. You can also manually select the questions that go into the test and add your own questions there as well. Um, and yeah, so this is an example of a question here. You can cross out answer options if you want to choose an answer option. And that was incorrect, um, but I get an explanation for the correct answer. I get rationales for the incorrect answer. So we're trying to guide your students towards the correct thinking here. Um, and I have a related video so I can remediate on the spot, which is uh, necessary for me apparently. Uh, so um, I just click on the video and it will pop up right here. And here, Provona will talk about reservoir masks, how um, that works. All right, so this is the basic overview of the student side. They get their own performance overviews. Um, there's also interesting things like simulations available soonish and so on. Um, and they can take their own notes. Um, oh, the one thing I forgot to show you, the very last thing I want to do right now, real quick, is uh, the end of video summary notes. I skipped that gauge of the catheter is. 
All right, so the quiz will pop up, but I'm going to skip the quiz and then the summary note will pop up here. So it will ask me to summarize what I've learned in my own words. Um, and some schools call this um, recall journal or something like that. Uh, depends on how you want to call it. Um, but this will be stored. So I have learned that extension tubing does this and that, and then I can save it. And now it's saved on, in my um, notes section. Oopsies, that's a new browser tab. So here are all of my notes, and I can also search through my notes and then go to the video again to, to prep for an exam, for example. Uh, so super neat feature um, based on learning science, making sure that students really understand and uh, master concepts for the long term. Um, I did also not <laughs> tell you about the learning objectives. Very important. All the videos have learning objectives um, listed up here. Uh, there's also a transcript you can search um, and uh, you can also download all of the slide decks here as mentioned earlier. So this is a slide deck for the, the very practical video. Um, but for each of the 2000 videos here, you can download the slide deck. Sometimes it takes like a bit. It's not a large file size. It's just um, because of like some background um, license check, I think. There we go. So it's one megabyte. It's actually super small. Um, and then you can utilize the slide deck. Maybe you like these illustrations or this one here. Um, and then you can just uh, copy this into your own slide deck. All right. So I promised a quick <laughs> presentation. Uh, I did go a bit longer than I wanted to, so sorry about that. Um, but let's now jump into Q and A, and um, I'm excited to to hear more about um, if you think and this could be helpful for your school, um, that it would be helpful for your faculty and students, and also hear any any questions or feedback that you have. And thanks for the attention so far. <clears throat> Timo, for the comprehensiveness of it, it was fast. Huh? Let me just add <laughs> one uh, uh, response already, because I will then also need to drop off. Um, so there was this interesting question around, like, is this an LMS, right? And and so um, the, the kind of the, the, the comments on that are, um, this is really sort of a next generation teaching solution, you know? So sort of your traditional LMS is an empty shell with a number of functionalities for you to add and organize your own content, right? Your traditional library solution is in essence, you know, a um, lookup tool, you know, like an organized kind of, you know, place where you can grab content and things like that, you know, often without an individual login for the students, depending how your library is configured, you know, as long as you're logged in, you can then browse around everything. So this is really, think of it as uh, a smart teaching engine for medicine. Uh, the way it relates to your LMS, think of it as sort of a plugin, yeah, but it's a smart plugin, right? It doesn't just give you like, here's a bunch of content. It gives you these sort of, you know, thousands of, of, of learning units in different formats. They're all interlinked. They're all tagged and multi-tagged because they can sit in multiple curricular structures, including your own that we put in there. And therefore they generate data. Uh, so that's the one kind of smartness about it. And then the second one is that it feeds the space retrieval for your learners, right? So the, all that formative assessment data that answering the quiz questions and the video generates for you is what feeds the space retrieval algorithm for the learner. And if you read a little bit on learning science, but frankly, even without reading it, you all know that we forget things, right? So actually statistically, in one hour, you will have forgotten 56% of what we talked about, right? And so the system is basically this smart plugin for teaching nursing and medicine that had all, has all these data and all these intelligent features attached, but it connects very easily to your LMS, you know? So then, you know, you, we could, you can hook us up with your technical people around how to do that. It's called things like LTI uh, 1.3, uh, single sign-on, which means you just hook it up and your students jump over without even noticing uh, almost. And um, you can also, what's called an LTI course wrapper, that means you can make content show up in your system with the intelligence still working. So that's the short answer on that question, which was asked in the forum. And I'm not sure everybody's read it, but it's obviously a very valid question since, uh, you know, since it's kind of a next generation kind of tool between these traditional types of tools, I think that's a very valid and, and, and helpful question. So I hope that's a helpful clarification. Fire any more questions and comments you have at Timo, please. Um, uh, he will handle them for you. Uh, Dr. Bryce and Nikhil, thanks so much for having me. 
um, all of you, thank you for 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 uh, sticking uh, with this uh, so far. And uh, greetings to the Philippines. I had the pleasure of being there myself before the lockdown, and I hope we'll have an excuse to come back sometime soon. You will. You will, Stefan. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, all right. Um, as we as you're thinking of your questions, because I know that you are now, you know, maybe in kind of asking like, what is is it gonna do for my curriculum? Was it and what will it do to my to my school to my college? We would be running some poll questions. I hope you can help us out with this one. It wouldn't take um, a long time. First question is, how can Likuyo help ensure proper curriculum enhancement for your nursing school? So what do you think? Will it be helping you to provide video lectures for blended learning aligned to Philippine curriculum? Uh, will it be for ensuring formative and summative assessment data as delivered intelligently to the faculty members? Or because it can digitally support your RLE or clerkship? by providing you offline access to lecturios, uh, programs, and content to your students. Or if you're saying jackpot, it's all of the above, right? Okay, so that, that's, that's, that's the first question. Or that's, oh yeah, we only have one question. That's the first and the last question that we would like to find out, hopefully. All right. Um, all right, we'll give you four more, more moments so that you can think through. We'll be closing the poll in a while. Again, I encourage our deans, our faculty, and if there are students in the room right now, we acknowledge you. You are the very reason why Lecturio exists as a platform. It is for you, it is to support you and make sure that the quality of uh, schooling that you deserve is actually delivered. So these kinds of technologies are helpful and have considered you first in their minds before they created it. So, all right, I think we need to end the poll. All right, everybody's saying, at least 84% is saying it's all of the above. It's providing video, ensuring formative and summative assessment, and it's helping them uh, to digitally support their RLE and clerkship programs. All right, so that's very good. Thank you so much. Also, if you're interested to do a local demo, local demo meaning just your school to really look into what lector you can do for you, you can also book uh, book as uh, book a schedule with us. We'll be putting the email address that you can write, or you can just text me. I know we're at X country, right? So more than the email, text comes first. You can text me. I'll be putting my text uh, my mobile number there. But let me just say it anyway. It's 0917-192-7471. I will be happy to represent Victoria and to book the schedule so that Mr. Timo Weiser can really come in and help us out with more information and with more um, a kind of um, you know support moving forward. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. I think we still, okay. Um, it's just a thank you. All right. Any other question? You can just unmute yourself. We can perhaps um, move you now to being panelists so you can just talk and, and ask, just feel free. We would like, this is for you. This is a support for the Dean especially and the faculty who are really looking for ways to, to enhance their curriculum. I know the demand as much as you know, as much as the challenges that you are all facing come August, right? So hopefully you find this very helpful and beneficial. So please, we're moving you now to panelists. So you can just ask questions, just unmute yourself and just shoot your questions away. All right. We still have about 10 more minutes to go before we practically call it a day, okay? And I just want to add, um, besides the demo, we're also happy to connect you with nursing schools who are already using Lecturio to get their perspective and experience um, if you prefer if you prefer that. Or you can, of course, also have both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very, that's, that's very true. I think what, what we're establishing here, Timo, is 
the community like what 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 um happened with one school is that they were motivated to take a look at Victoria soon after they heard that one school is using it you know outstanding uh, very outstanding and and because of that they started reaching out to us and they're saying yeah they'll consider having Victoria so things like that i think it's it's not like you having it for yourself to keep no it's sharing it out so that everybody gets to the quality of, of education all our nurses deserve, our future nurses deserve. This, this is how exactly. democratizing, you know, and liberating it is for everyone. All right? Yeah. That's also how we see it globally, really. So it's really like a big community of educators who want to move education forward. Mm -hmm. And um, especially in the Philippines with the CHEP curriculum, um, if we improve the product with together with one school, so for example, with Our Lady of Fatima University, we're working on clerkship bundles right. and have released clerkship bundles for RLE. Um, these will be available for all of the schools in the Philippines eventually. So we can shortly and um, improve the product together and enhance the experience for all schools. Exactly. Maybe you're also asking, uh, and you're just shy, <laughs> like how much will it cost you or your students? When when you have that kind of question, you have our numbers there, you have our email, you can just request for a proposal. Just give us the few details, like um, how many students do you have, right? And how many do you intend to use uh, Lictorio? And when? When do you want to start? Are you starting right away? this August or what, whenever, if we have all of those details, immediately we can send out a proposal right away. And if you like what you see in the proposal, you can book a demo or either way, book a demo first and then ask us for a proposal. However you want it, we're there to support you. All right, so, so far so good. The common question, actually, uh, Timo, from the previous uh, webinars that we had is always, you know, can they use it offline? I mean, how easy is it when it comes to its usability and utilization? Maybe you can address that briefly. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, really a common question. Yeah. Um, so with the mobile apps that you would get for your school with your branding and colors and so on, um, comes an offline mode. So you can download all of the content onto your device. Um, in high definition, medium definition, and also lower definition, which is still plenty sharp on any mobile device. I sometimes use it on my computer as well. And um, it's as easy as downloading Netflix videos. So that's that's always my, my comparison. Um, so if you can use Netflix and download the videos there, it's the same thing um, on all platform. Um, so as easy as it gets. And remember that you can also um, get your own videos and your own content into our system. And then your students can also download these uh, videos and so on onto their devices. So um, it really um, makes your content available offline as well. So th that's the beauty of it, right? Because they can download it in the app offline. All right. Yes. So that's the beauty of it. Okay. I have a question here. Um, who said in Ian sent us this question. I don't know if she or he, but either way, I am a registered nurse here in the Philippines. Can I ask if Victoria can be used also for NCLEX RN preparations? Yes, uh, it's perfect for that. So um, if you go to lecture.com, for example, um, you will see like a couple of different exams and uh, it's built as a global platform. Um, and we already have NCLEX prep on there, but as mentioned, we can also create the same kind of um, um, exam prep uh, for the Filipino national exam. Right, wonderful. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, this particular webinar is presented by Redefine Learning, the official partner of Lecturio here in the Philippines. And of course, the president of Redefine Learning is here with us to give us a simple closing remarks for everyone. Mr. Nikhil Chopra, please, all the way from India. Thank you so much, Bryce. Good afternoon to, to all the deans, faculties, and students that have joined in today. I'm Nikhil Chopra, founder and president of Redify Learning, and we are the education partner of Lecture in the Philippines and India. Thank you again to Stefan and Timo for taking time today, sharing about the new features and functionality that Lecture is bringing in. 
I must say, uh, Lecturio is doing a fantastic work to come up with new features and functionalities to make learning more insightful and outcome driven. And would like to congratulate Lecturio team, Stephen, Dr. Ronda and Timo for always taking the feedback and working on it to develop the interactive and quality lectures content. It's exciting to share early this year uh, like Timo shared, when we started working with uh, nursing schools in the Philippines to align lecturer content to the chaired nursing curriculum uh, to further strengthen the offering of lecturer nursing. We, along with Lecturio, are excited to partner with your medical and nursing schools in the Philippines and continue our mission to ensure continuity of quality education to your medical, nursing, and other allied healthcare no courses. We believe together we can change and adapt the flexible learning mission of CHED in the Philippines. We look forward to finding a partnership with your institutions in the new semester starting in August, as we are already currently in talking with more than 30 to 40 medical and nursing schools to leverage the power of Lecturio. A nursing app to support your teaching outcomes and ensuring no nursing students are left behind. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Thank you, Bryce. Outstanding. Totally appreciate all of this partnership. All right. So if you still have questions or you want to reach out to us, please, we have our uh, contact details in the chat box. And you know where to find us. You found us at Hero Summit platform so you can always go there and of course you can check out the website of Lecturio and um, check more on the details. We also give free access, free trial access in case you're interested to really explore deeply and for you to see uh, what's in store for you in, in a closer view. All right so ladies and gentlemen thank you for paying us your time once again. It's an energetic Friday and um, I am just thankful that we are all here listening and learning and appreciating what Lecturio has done and what Lecturio will still be bringing to the, the medical and nursing world. All right. Um, I think there's a final poll that we'd like you to ask. I mean, would like to ask and would like you to answer. This is a very personal question, ladies and gentlemen. Would you wish to see the demo of Lecturio Nursing app? You can say yes within next week so we can reach out to you. Yes within the next two weeks or yes within a month. Now we will now schedule that, whatever you say. All right. So please keep us in the loop for your plans. Thank you. And, and while you're answering the question and, and one note here, I think the poll is only visible to the attendees, not to the attendees who made panelists. Um, so for those of you who are now panelists and cannot see the um, question, you can also um, reach out to Nikhil and Bryce directly um, via email to make sure that you can do right, your yes. um, demo. All right, yes, yes, yes. I think now it's working. All right, it's working. <laughs> okay, good. Awesome, all right. And also I wanted to say thank you, Dr. Bryce. Thank you, Nikhil, for um, having us. Um, we appreciate you as a partner in the Philippines. It's amazing to work with you and see you care about the education community in the Philippines so much. Thank you, Timo. You've always been giving us wonderful insights and wonderful yeah, demos. Just to share with you, Timo and uh, Bryce, we also have a, a deans coming from India and UAE in this demo. So oh. Demo, we have the deans from uh, India and UAE also. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Okay. Uh, from Miss Christine, thank you. I'm looking forward to you, Victoria. All right. Sure. We'll be reaching out to you, Mom Christine. Thank you so much. And we, we make a lot of chica chica. Sometimes, you know, Deans would be asking me a lot of questions, sharing me all of these things that's happening. I am all ears. All right. So please reach out to us. Let me know when I can call you and when we can talk. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great Friday afternoon. It's raining here in the Philippines. I think we have a tropical storm. Uh, but nonetheless, we have a shiny, shiny outlook. So everything is well. You want everything... to right. If you want to join a simple photo op, please turn on your, your video. I mean, yeah, your videos. So you can join 
our photo op and we can document this, everyone. Let's see. All right. Great, great. Hi, Mark. Hi, Christina. Hi, Felicita. This is a wonderful name. I haven't heard of this name before. From what school, Ma'am Felicita? F E U N R M F, Ma'am. I've been reaching out. I've been, we've been reaching out to F E U, but we haven't gotten the luck yet. I need to get with you. Wonderful. Yes, Ma'am. I will. Thank I'll you. catch you right away. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, everyone. Smile, smile. Okay. All right. Again, my name is Bryce, and I am your friend here at Hero Ed TV with Lectorio. Bye, everyone. Happy Friday. Salamat. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.